Hey everyone, today I'm bringing you a tutorial for this hair bow. This is a beautiful hair bow. I know I say that about all the bows that I show you, but obviously they wouldn't be worthy of a tutorial if they weren't beautiful. And this one in Portuguese is known as the Formosa hair bow, which actually does translate to beautiful because it is beautiful. I've added some little spike tails on this and I just love the dimension of it if you look at the side imagine that sitting on a little girl's hair with all of these lovely flowy loops it is just so pretty and I've added this silver mirror effect leather center just to break up the white but this is a hair bow order and she wanted white but I, like I said I just wanted to break it up a little bit and I thought that silver mirror looked lovely against the white so let's get to the tutorial for this gorgeous hair bow. So you need two pieces for the main part of the bow and then these three are for the spike tails. Obviously, as you can see, I've already done two to save time. So for the main part of the bow, you will need two pieces of one inch wide ribbon or two and a half centimeter wide. And the two pieces are cut to 20 centimeters in length or just short of eight inches in length. And that is two pieces for the main part of the bow. And then for the tails or the spikes, you need three pieces, again, one inch wide or two and a half centimeters. And these three pieces are cut to eight centimeters in length or just over three inches in length. And that is three pieces. I have done a tutorial of this bow using one and a half inch wide ribbon. I will pop a link to that at the end of this video if you want to make a wider version of it. And obviously it will make a bigger bow. But this one, I think it's still a really nice size. The actual finished bow is around three inches across or eight centimeters. So it's a nice size, especially if you want to make these to wear in pairs as this is going to be a pair. So I'm going to set these three aside for now because we'll do the tails at the end. So taking your two 20 centimeter pieces to begin with, you will need to heat seal the raw edges. So I'm just using a lighter, the blue part of the flame, just to heat seal and prevent further frying or any frying. And then picking up one of the pieces, I'm going to fold it in half to find the center. And then I've got a couple of fabric clips here. You can use hair clips if you haven't got fabric clips, but I'm using these fabric clips. These are really good. I will link everything that I use, including the clips, the thread, the ribbon, everything in the description below this video. So you can check those out. So now we've got it folded in half. I'm going to take this top piece and I'm going to slide it over to the left slightly, keeping it's central and the bottom lined up and then to work out how far you want to slide this so I'm grab my tape measure so again that's folded in half I'm sliding the top over to the left and you want from the top here to where these overlap to be three centimeters so I'm just doing it by eye to begin with and then I want where these overlap to the top, I'll just move it aside slightly as you can see. So where they overlap to the top is three centimeters or around one and a quarter inches. And then to hold that in position, I'm going to use one of my fabric clips and pop that on the top like that. And then taking this bottom back piece, I'm going to fold this up diagonally and then I'm going to do the same now with this top piece now. I'm going to fold this up diagonally the opposite way. So you've got like this sort of point at the bottom. And then going back to this first piece that I folded back first. So the left piece, I'm going to fold this down now and meet this inner corner with this point. So grabbing this top piece, folding it down lining it up with the point at the bottom 
and then taking this piece on the right again folding it downwards and lining it up at the bottom to meet that point and then what you want is for these to be level touching at the back this piece should be going across straight and they're all in line at the bottom grabbing another fabric clip hold those all in place so if I just remove this clip so it should look like this these pieces here should be the same height as you can see mine's not quite so I'm just going to remove this clip slide this piece up slightly place that back on there so I've slid these so they're still in line at the bottom everything is in line with the point in the middle but I wanted these two to be level at the top so this is what we're looking for this shape like that straight across the bottom level at the top and this piece here is going straight across the top as well now we're going to do those steps with this piece but we're going to mirror it so again folding it in half this time instead of sliding the top piece over to the left we're going to slide the top piece over toward the right again starting off by eye making sure it's still all level and you want three centimeters from this top to where they overlap so as you can see mine's not at three centimeters it's at three and a half so I'm going to slide it a little bit further so it just overlaps at the three centimeter mark grabbing another fabric clip I'm going to pop that on there to hold that in place and then taking this back piece we're going to fold this back first over towards the right and then this left piece fold it up diagonally toward the left so again you've got this little point at the bottom and then taking this piece which we folded back first I'm going to take this down now to meet the corner with that bottom point the same with the other side folding it down to meet all at the bottom in the middle and then I'm just going to take this clip off and pop it on the bottom to hold it in place so I can check and yeah this one is has worked out better so again I'm making sure that these two here are the same height as you can see it's slightly taller this side so again I'm going to pull this front piece up not the back because you want to keep the back level at the bottom I'm going to gently give it a little tug to bring that higher and then roll this piece down a little bit so they're level at the top they still meet at the bottom central and then I'm going to pop that clip on the top to hold that all in place so this is what you're aiming for at this point you can put them together to make sure they all look the same and then you're ready to sew in your pinch along the bottom where the raw edges are so i've got a needle here threaded with some extra strong thread i'm just popping a knot in the end because i haven't done so yet And then taking one of your pieces you want to do eight stitches four on either side so going in through the top from the first corner for our first stitch two three and 
and then keeping this pinched with my finger we do have a clip at the top so that should hold it in place enough anyway our fourth stitch we're going to come up through this corner and catch the right side of this point and now we're going to mirror those four stitches on the opposite side so going in through the top on this half catching the other bottom corner this is our sixth stitch seventh and then the eighth one coming up through the bottom on the last edge and then you can remove that other clip and pull this tight to form that pinch. Once you've got that nice and tight in there, go through the last couple of bits of ribbon and then don't pull it completely tight, go through that loop once or twice to form a knot, pulling it tight before you trim off the excess thread. And that is one half of the bow complete. And now we're going to do those exact same stitches on our other half. we've got our two pieces now complete ready to stick together but my hot glue is just warming up so I'm going to set those aside and we can work on the tails whilst we wait for the hot glue to warm up so as you can see I've already cut the spikes in two pieces of my tails and these are the eight centimeter pieces of ribbon so to cut the spikes in I fold the ribbon in half along that top edge and then from this outer corner, I cut from the top down diagonally and I like to curve it slightly just to soften that spike. So from this open edge, I'm going to cut diagonally and curved. Still keeping it pinched together, but I'm going to slightly open it up so that they're not touching. So I can heat seal that raw edge without melting the fibres and bonding them together. I'm using the blue part of the frame and giving them a good seal. So you've got a nice soft spike on there. I'm going to do the same with the other end. So from this open corner, starting at the top, cutting down diagonally, slightly curved, open it up slightly and then using my lighter blue part of the flame to get a good heat seal on there. So that is how I do my tail spikes. And now I'm going to join these together. So again, I'm just going to pop a knot in my thread. By the time we've done this, we should have a hot glue gun ready to use. So I'm going to lay these on top of each other evenly like that and then we're going to sew four stitches through this middle. I'm going to pick that up now and sew four stitches, one, two, three, four, like that. I'm going to pull all the way through, form the pinch, and then just go around that centre a couple of times to hold it all in place. Pull it tight, and then on this underside, I'm just going to catch a little bit of the ribbon on that end, and then go through again for a second time. 
and this time I'm going to go through that loose loop a couple of times to form a knot. To trim off the excess thread and hold it all in place. Trim off those little bits of thread there. So that is our spike tail base. And now we can join the two halves together because the hot glue should be nicely warmed up. And then onto our tails, so placing a bit of glue across that middle and then layering that on the top, making sure it is straight and central. And then I've got a clip here which is 45 millimetres wide and a piece of one centimetre wide white ribbon to match my bow and I'm going to line my clip with this. So 11 centimetres to wrap a 45 millimetre clip. So I'm going to pop some hot glue on this front part, not the pinch part. And I'm just working this out because this is going to be worn as a pair so I want this clip to go on the opposite direction. So when you're making bows to be worn as a pair you want the clips to go on the opposite way. So this one will clip on the hair this way and then this one will clip on the hair that way. So if you've got a bunches or piggies they're both clipped on the same direction. So that is a good tip for you there. And now we're ready to add our mirror center. So I've got a piece of mirror leatherette here, cut around one centimeter wide by five centimeters in length. I'm going to place a touch of glue just on the top middle. I'm rubbing it in with the tip of my glue gun just so that it isn't too bulky. And then I want to cover the top join of my bow first and then bringing it round making sure it's straight to the underside and to move all the tails out of the way before I add my glue so I don't ruin my lovely bow and place some hot glue on this side first now mirror leatherette can sometimes peel away with hot glue quite easily so what I like to do is use a little bit of super glue on here. So I've got some Gorilla Super Glue Gel and I'm going to place a little bit of this along the very tip end. And then hot glue underneath that. And then the hot glue will Hold that immediately whilst the super glue sets. So I'm just going to open that clip, making sure my tails are out of the way. And then you can just neaten up your tails once you've stuck that down. Yes, on any shiny surface, hot glue can peel away. So I do like to just add a little bit of the super glue, especially if I'm making the bows for a customer as these are. If they're for my little girl, then I risk the hot glue. And most of the time that does actually hold, to be honest, because I have got a good quality hot glue gum. 
but as these are for another customer, just to be sure, I will add the hot glue. And there is your finished, gorgeous, or beautiful, should I say, hair bow. I just love the shape of these. These will always be a favourite of mine. I will pop a link in the corner here, and this is for the one, in, one and a half inch wide ribbon version. So it's a bigger version of this bow. So you can check that out. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you press the bell button, that will turn on notifications. I'll see you again soon with another tutorial. Bye-bye for now.